Okay, the last word problem, number 19. Regular dog food worth 20 cents per pound was blended with premium dog food worth 35 cents per pound. The resulting mixture of 1,800 pounds was worth 25 cents per pound. What was the value of the premium dog food in the mixture? So X is going to be the number of pounds of premium and Y is going to be the number of pounds of regular or you could have done it the other way around. So is this a value value or a total value? Meaning is there a total of the two mixed um, premium and regular? Yeah, right here, 1800 pounds. So this is a total value problem and we have x plus y equals 1800. Okay, and next we want to do the other one and, and since I mixed these up backwards, um, why don't we change that so we just know they're in order. Okay, I will make this the regular and this the premium. That means the regular dog food is 20 cents per pound, so 0.20x, and the premium dog work food is 0.35y, because it's 35 cents per pound, and the resulting value of the mixture is 25 cents per pound times 1,800. So should I have more of the regular or more of the premium when I'm finished? Well the cost of the mix is 25 cents so is that closer to the regular dog food at 20 cents per pound or is it closer to 35 cents per pound for the premium well it's closer to the regular which means when you're finished you should have more of the regular dog food than you do the premium okay so I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation and for this one I multiplied I kept the decimals and I just multiplied the top equation by negative 0.2 there's many, many different ways to solve this problem, so I chose to multiply by negative 0.2. So negative 0.2x plus minus minus 0.2y equals negative 360. Bring down the next equation, 0.2x plus 0.35y and when you multiply 0.25 times 1800, you get 450. Okay, I'm going to use addition and my x's will eliminate. When I combine negative 0.2y plus 0.35y, I get a positive 0.15y. When I collect these like terms, negative 360 plus 450, I get positive 90. Divide by 0.15 and you get y is 600. Okay. Plug in to the original and you get x plus 600 equals 1800. Subtract the 600 and you get x equals 1200. Well, let's answer the question. This one's slightly different because it says what's the value of the premium dog food? Well, premium is the y value and the value of it would be how many pounds, which is what we said y was, 600 times how much is it per pound? 0.35, 35 cents per pound. And when you multiply that out, you get $210. So the value of the premium dog food in the mixture, since there's 600 pounds at 35 cents per pound, is $210. Okay, we're back to graphing, but this time we're graphing inequalities. So this is where we're doing a the shading, okay? Still we need to state the slope and y-intercept, so you need to make sure that you have each equation solved for y. And this one we do. So the slope of the first line is negative 1, and the intercept is positive 2. So I'll go up to 2, and then move down 1, right 1. Looking at my inequality sign, it has an equal sign, which means this, the line that I draw through these points will be solid. And since it's less than, I'm going to shade below the line. So I'm just going to indicate with my arrows that it would be this side of the line that would be shaded. Because remember, what I really want here is the overlapping shaded region. 
Okay, so I don't want to actually shade until I find out where they overlap. All right, so now I want to look at the second line. It's already solved for y, so its slope is 2 and the intercept is 3. So I'm going to start at the point 0, 3, and I'm going to move up to right 1. Looking back to the equation, that has no equal sign, so it's going to be a dotted line. And greater than means shade above the line. That would be this side of the line. Now you'll notice that these two lines create four separate regions and what you want to do is shade the region that shows both of the arrows pointing towards each other. So you'll notice in this region we have only one arrow, no arrow here. In this region none of the arrows are pointing in. Here again only one, but in this region you see that both of the arrows are pointing towards each other. So this would be the region that you shade. Okay, don't cross either of the lines, and this is the only region that should be shaded on your test. You may use your graphing calculator to determine that shaded region. I just can't show it to you on this video. Okay, problem number 21. Same type of problem, but what we want to do is solve each equation for y. So when I solve this equation for y, I am going to subtract the 3x and divide by a negative. Because I divide by negative 1, I'm going to flip that inequality. And when you do that, you should get y less than 3x, which means the slope is 3 and the intercept is 0. So I'm going to start at the point 0, 0, and I'm going to move up 3, right 1. Looking back at my original problem here that I've solved for y, there's no equal sign, so I will use a dotted line through these points. It's less than, so I will shade below the line. Okay, looking at the next equation, solving that for y, just need to subtract 4x, so I get y less than or equal to negative 4x plus 4. The slope here is negative 4. The intercept is 4. So I'll start at the point 0, 4, and then I'll move down 4, right 1. Looking back at the inequality, I see it does have an equal sign, which means the line that I draw through these points will be solid. And it's a less than, so I will shade below the line. Again, it separates these into four regions, and you see that the region here at the bottom is the one where you have the two arrows pointing towards each other. So here is the region that you would shade.